Fatima Daggett. Hi, I'm Neversink, and this is a video about the Path of Exile 2.0 Exploding Arrow Sign, or as I call her, the Bombshell Sign. This build uses Explosive Arrow for both multi-target and single target. It is also a build that can be played completely or nearly completely self-found. In fact, every single item you'll see during this video was actually farmed with this build within 3 days including the Imperial Bow Uniques, including the Divination Distillate, all the equipment uh, and three Exalted Orbs. This build relies on a concept called the Layered Defense. We use a lot of different defense mechanics, such as Evasion, Dodge, Spell Dodge, Arctic Armor, Enduring Cry and also Immortal Core to survive and to provide a very high survivability for the setup. This setup also can stack a lot of magic find making it a great build if you've just started playing Path of Exile or if you're starting to play in a new league. In addition to this, you can sacrifice Critical Strike Chance or Magic Find in order to stack more health point. The video you currently see is a level 80 character. It was farmed and created within 3 days. If I wouldn't be playing Cell Found or if I was actually stacking less Magic Find, I could easily uh, have more than 4.5k health points, or if I would play on Hardcore over 5000 health points at this level, which is a very decent amount of life. Explosive Arrow is a very special skill in Path of Exile. It can only be scaled by fire damage, elemental damage, area damage, and projectile damage. In fact, weapon elemental damage, and bow damage, and weapon damage at all do not scale the Explosive Arrow in any way. This also includes a damage and critical strike damage and critical strike chance with bows. This kind of makes the explosive arrow skill hard to scale. However, with the introduction of a slower projectiles um, gem in Passive Exile Awakening and the introduction of jewels, explosive arrow received a lot of new options to scale it efficiently, which basically gave birth to this setup. This build also utilizes double curses, Assassin's Mark and Flammability. These curses can be replaced with Defenses Curses or other options such as Elemental Weakness. Also, this build uses Elemental Equilibrium and the Fire Penetration Gem, combined with several more multipliers from Frenzy Charges, Concentrate Effect or Area of Effect stacking and overlapping. This build can dish out pretty much monstrous damage and insta-kill a lot of bosses if it ignites them or critical strikes them. Even if it doesn't do it, the damage it does is very very high and on par with most builds. Due to the high base damage and the more multiplier scaling of this build, we do not use anger or any other aggressive aura reservations. Instead we use arctic armor, clarity and if you decide to run a slower or a better bow, you can also use things like mind over matter or Grace. This allows the build to stack some impressive survivability while still dishing out very 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 high damage. This build also uses several utility spells, such as the Blink Arrow, which is very very fast if used with a Quill Rain. It also uses a Curse and Hit Split Arrow Chain. Finally, it uses Enduring Cry Immortal Core Combo and the Ice Golem. The Ice Golem can be replaced with any other Golem. As you can see in the video, the build clears efficiently while finding quite a lot of rares. This is caused by the higher magic find. This map is nothing special. It's not exactly a very hard or a very easy map. It's an average map level 72. But it does clear pretty well for a character that was created 2 or 3 days ago. Right now you can actually see the worst case scenario. If you neither crit nor ignite a boss. In any other case the bot would be dead seconds ago. So yeah. Let's jump into the build itself. I hope you like it. Okay guys, let's talk about the skill tree and the jewels for a second. This guide is designed for a sign. We start off with the left side. We go through the jewel socket and grab the mana. We grab shaper and go down for the constitution and life nodes. We then go to Elemental Equilibrium. It's usually better to take it off when you're high level and using uh, a more or less adjusted explosive arrow build. We then grab Quick Recovery on the way. If needed, we take the Strength node. 
and we get the fire damage we need from Explosive Impact and Heart of Flame. We also get crew preparation and deep swords for the mana and life we need. The Whispers of Doom is very important since it uh, allows us to ampli amplify our damage. On the right side we start with attack speed and dexterity, grab the third Jew node, go through Haria, grab True Strike and Hired Killer for the life and critical strike, grab another Jew node. Then we go to the juicy area of the shadow where we get quickness, the critical strikes, chance from assassination, a frenzy charge, more life, sniper, coordination, blood siphon for more life and trickery. Then we go down and take acrobatics and spell and face acrobatics to get dodge and spell dodge to increase the survivability of this setup. Heart seeker and frenzy charges are also important and are gained down here. Finally we take herbalism. The character is currently level 80. Further note should be invested to increase the life here. We can also grab a life point here. We could go down to increase the uh, life from Revenge of the Hunted. If so desired, one can also focus to get more critical strike chance here or here. Uh, additionally, we can also go for some more exotic options, such as, <coughs> excuse me, such as stacking some mana and maybe even going for Mind Over Matter if you're using a slow bow instead of a quill rain. Finally, there are some other options such as um, going for Auras and gra grabbing Charisma or um, the option to go for Survivalist or grab more Junos. Okay, now to, now to Jews. So, this build uses four Jews. Jews in general should be used to increase your life, sometimes your mana or mana on hit, your resistances, and to stack damage. Stacking damage can be done by stacking projectile damage, fire damage, area damage, um, elemental damage and general damage. Damage with weapons such as weapon elemental damage does not affect the damage of explosive arrow and should not be used. In this current setup I'm using the survivally secret jewel and some random rares. They are not exactly awesome but they serve their purpose. Okay. Let's talk about the links. I'm using two explosive arrow gems. One linked with fire penetration, concentrate effect and slow projectiles. Despite the gems being all only level 18 or 19, and I'm only using a 4 link with more or less cell found equipment. The damage from this link can be insane. I actually calculated how much damage this can do. The result is over 1 million damage including the burning damage. This calls for a small demonstration. Hello wall, hello. As I did not crit by the way. Z crit. So even if you don't crit Vo, he will actually die of the burning damage. And if you crit, he, it will likely die in a second or instantly. So yeah, I guess it works out quite well. I'm using all another 4 linked for my multi-target setup. Explosive arrow, increased RF effect, fire penetration and great multiple projectiles. Due to the high attack speed of Quill Rain, you don't need to use faster attacks. Even with just 4 links, the damage of explosive arrow is very high. Increased area of effect causes the area of effect to overlap, causing very fatal explosion and killing whole mob groups in a single, single explosion. Due to the high damage of explosive arrow, I actually decided to use my 5 link for a cursed hit setup. It's also possible to easily execute it with a 4 link using rain of arrows instead of split arrow and chain. Yet, out of comfort reasons, I prefer split arrow. I'm linking Split Arrow to Curse and Hit, Flammability and Assassin's Mark. You can also run Temporal Chains and Enfeeble if you're playing on a Hardcore League. You can also replace Chain and Split Arrow with Curse with Blind and Rain of Arrows and use something like Meroni's Downfall. The gems in my bow are actually all skill gems. I'm not using any support gems. I'm using a lot of utility spell spells in this setup. I'm using Enduring Cry, Summon Ice Golem, Arctic Armor and Blink Arrow. Blink Arrow is a potent way to escape and it's a good movement spell. Arctic Armor provides a lot of survivability and helps with surviving reflect and heavy physical damage hits that were introduced in the Awakening. The Ice Golem can be replaced with any other golem. It's a nice companion. 
It has to breathe some on here and there, but it's still a good idea to use him. The Enduring Cry can be used in between uh, battles or when you're waiting for the explosive arrow to explode and provides an additional edge when surviving. The Enduring Cry is combined with a very high level cast when damage taken to trigger a long immortal call and survive different physical damage spikes. This is also combined with increased duration. There's also a Clarity Link here. The Clarity Link can be actually moved here and a, and a Molten Shell or a similar setup can be introduced here. Sadly, however, currently I've corrupted my Quirin for 5% chance to cross monsters on Flea and I don't have the available sockets to, to link Clarity somewhere else. There are also some other options that you can run. If you want, you can run Val Haste, Val Grace, Val Molten Shell. You can also use Rallying Cry in the in instead of Enduring Cry, yet I feel like Enduring Cry provides a very higher benefit. Item Rarity is a good option. While leveling, you can use Fire Gems. Flame Blast, fl fl Vile Flame Blast, Vile Fireball and Fireball are very nice uh, gems for leveling. The fire damage and projectile damage we grab also benefits them. Okay, let's talk about items and weapons for a second. Explosive Arrow does not scale of physical damage and is not affected by weapon or bow damage. This makes Quill Rain one of the best weapons for Explosive Arrow. The high attack speed and the high projectile speed makes it a very important choice. Optionally, you can also use something like a Death Harp. The Death Harp provides a huge critical strike multiplier and an additional arrow. There are also other choices such as a plus 2 or plus 3 to gem level bows with attack speed and critical strike multiplier. However, those options are more designed for uh, endgame characters who also have a lot of currency. For the start, I'd recommend grabbing Quill Rain since it, makes, uh, since it gives you a l very smooth gameplay. In addition to the general explosive arrow, you can also move very fast using explosive using blink arrow, which can help you out to avoid a lot of trick and danger situations. Finally, the Quill Rain has the advantage to have no implicit. Considering how cheap and how common it is, you can corrupt Quill Rains to gain effects such as chance to flee, additional arrows, um, fire damage leech, or power charges or culling strike. This build does not require any uniques except for the Quirin bow or the Deshar bow. My helmet is a random helmet with life resistance and rarity. So is my amulet and so is my ring. I've crafted my armor myself from a random firefling. If you don't need a firefling to run this build, a falling is completely sufficient. I'm using the firefling out of comfort reasons. I'm using split arrow and chain instead of rain of arrows to apply curse and hit on my opponents. My quiver is a random rare quiver. It's important to know that the 26% elemental weapon damage does nothing for the build. The 1 to 2 cold damage, however, is very important. It is used to proc elemental equilibrium. It's actually important to know that the elemental equilibrium is a very, very good note here. Because of the nature of explosive error, you can first stack up arrows and reduce the resistances of your enemies using s s things such as split arrow chain. Once the explosion happens, the, all your enemies will have reduced, re reduced elemental resistances. Obviously, after the explosion, they'll have increased elemental resistance against fire, but then you can reduce this once again, if they're still alive, with the split arrow. Okay, to proceed, I'm using the Orsi's gauntlets to stack some magic find and some elemental resistances. I'm using the blood dance boots. The blood dance boots are totally not required. You can play without them, you can play with a serious step, you can use things like Sun Dance or like Calm Truth instead. You can also use just some rare random boots. You can also learn, run Blood Rage by yourself. However, I was lucky enough to find the Blood Dance and it's actually a good item for this build. We can get up to 8 friendly charges depending on the corruptions and the rewards. And with 8 8 friendly charges you would gain 8% life regeneration per second, which is great and provides another layer of defense. Several good uniques that you can use with this build. Especially the chest slot can be used with a lot of different uniques. The Restless Ward is one of the, the good candidates. So is the Cloak of Flame due to the ignite duration, the fire assist, then the chance to ignite. The physical damage taken as fire damage is also a nice layer in defense. You can also use other defensive options such as Belly of the Beast, um, Lightning Coil, or even Calm's Heart if you can find the sockets and the links. Finally, there are other interesting options, especially the options Greed's Embrace and the option Carcass Jack are great unique uh, chest armors we can use.
It's also important to note that the bow choices are kind of limited to Quirin, Death Harp, and to rare bows with a plus 2 or plus 3 level to fire or to bow gems. In addition to um, in addition to attack speed and critical strike rating, your general bows such as Chinso, Alliance, and Clear are actually pretty bad choices here. I'm using two life lasks for this build. A consistent life lask with evasion rating and charge recovery to heal me over the whole fight, and a life lask with shield and freeze immunity and instant recovery for complicated situations. I also use a mana flask. Sustaining the mana of explosive error without the mana flask is rather important during a long fight. Despite clarity, you can run out of mana very fast. This is due to the very high attack speed of Quirin and the very high mana cost of explosive error. With the mana flask, sustaining the mana cost of explosive error is a lot easier. I'm also using the Divination Distillate. The Divination Distillate is used for two purposes. The obvious purpose is the magic finding purpose. However, the Divination Distillate also provides a nice edge against reflect maps or reflect mobs. Um, with a 6% to all maximum elemental resistances, you are way more likely to survive high reflect damage. It's also important to note that with the, impo the, with the improvements to Eternal Mana Flask or to Mana Flask in general in the Awakening, the Mana Flask can hold 5 charges, well, 40 charges and 85 charges each, so, um, and lasts 6 seconds. This can be used to pro provide with useful other benefits such as bleeding immunity or curse immunity or, c or stun recovery using the eternal mana flask. Finally, I'm using a quicksilver flask with quality charge recovery and movement speed to get me through the map faster. There are a lot of other things to talk about. Things such as the way explosive error stack or element reflect, or the full list of viable unique ideas, options, and itemization options. Finally, there are things to talk about, such as the way one could gear for hardcore. Other things to talk about are topics such as itemization during the endgame, the way this build can ex be expanded in order to be viable during the endgame encounter, such as Uber Ice Theory. Other things to talk about are topics such as itemization during the endgame, the way this build can ex be expanded in order to be viable during the endgame encounter such as Uber Ice Theory. This build and this guide was tested during the Pass of Exile 2.0 beta, The Awakening. This means that there will be likely small or major changes to this build during the next weeks or months. I'll be creating a full guide describing the way this build works in detail and the mess and the interesting itemization and endgame options for it. You can find the skill tree for this build in the video description. So, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching, I'm Never Think, and it's actually my first video, so if you got any suggestions uh, or critics, please do tell me. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.